Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to remove the tire from a beadlock. This is something that people can do in lots of different ways. I'm going to show you how I do it using some pretty cool affordable tools that most of us have on our rigs. So check it out. So what's a beadlock? A lot of you guys watching this video were probably new to this, aren't really sure what a beadlock is, or maybe you bought a used set of beadlocks and you stumbled across this when it was time to change your tires. So stay tuned. Uh, I'm going to show you completely step by step how to safely and easily remove your tire. But in this case, just for the people that aren't sure, a beadlock, okay, is identified basically by this outer bead ring. Now this bead ring in the case of this race line is made out of aluminum and it has 32 bolts all the way around it. Now each one of those bolts has a job of basically holding this bead ring to the wheel. And in between the bead ring and the wheel, it pinches the outer bead of the tire. Okay, so it stops your tire from rolling off the wheel when you run really low air pressure or oftentimes even if you have a flat tire. So what are the benefits to running a beadlock? Why would you want to run a beadlock? Well, it's pretty simple. A beadlock allows you to air your tire down and run really, really low tire pressure without having the issues that come with running really low pressure on a standard wheel. Now, you can watch the YouTube video. I'll link to it in the description about are beadlocks better because for your particular application and use, they might not be the answer. That video is going to talk about some really cool things. It's also going to show you what the footprint of the tire does exactly when you air it down. I actually kind of stamp it on a piece of paper and then hang it on the side of the Jeep to discuss three different common uh, air pressures, right? One like on road at regular pressure, one air down to what you would want to pay, basically air it down to without a beadlock, and then what it airs down to and looks like with a beadlock. So definitely go check that out. But another one of the major, major benefits to having beadlocks is being able to mount and balance your own tires. When you have a really big tire, a lot of shops either charge a lot of money or they don't have a machine quite capable of properly balancing a tire like a 40 or even sometimes a 37. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you have the ability to mount your own tires, right? Be a little bit more self-reliant. It's pretty awesome. You can get a deal, have them shipped to your house, and then mount them on your own time in your own garage with a few basic, basic, basic hand tools, some of which you might already own. So let's get back to it. Let's check out exactly how we take a tire off of a beadlock wheel. Okay, so here we are back in front of the beadlock. Uh, the first thing you're gonna wanna do when you go to take a tire off is gonna be to air it down. Now, I happen to use a air down tool like this, kinda looks like a screwdriver but it's basically a valve core removal tool. I'll link to it in the video description, but it allows you to basically remove the core out of the center of your valve stem and allow it to deflate and let all the air out very, very quickly. Now, a typical air down tool that you use off-road would also do the job just fine. I don't happen to use this one off-road, but I do carry it with me because if I ever have an issue with a valve core and I can't keep air in the tire, I have extra valve cores and I have this tool with me so I can swap them out. But let's get down to it. Okay, so after we've aired down the tire, we're gonna wanna take out those 32 bolts that we talked about before. They hold your outer ring on. Let's zip those out. Once those are out, you can take off your ring. You can give it a quick inspection if you want, set it off to the side. Now, my wheel, because of the thickness of my inner bead, I also have these little, uh, these little spacers in there. They're plastic spacers. To, to helps, it helps the bead ring not deform, so I'm gonna pull those out. Okay guys, so now you can see that with the bead ring removed and those spacers removed off of the wheel, uh, your tire combination may not need those. It kind of depends on the thickness of the, uh, of the bead. Uh, they're not expensive, they're just made of plastic, but basically uh, I had to give the, give the wheel a quick pop with my hand uh, in order to, to release it because the dirt and grime and stuff that's on here was kind of holding it on. But you can see 
down in here, right? I mean, that's that's the inside of the tire. This is the outer bead. That's how thick it is, right? This is my thumb. Uh, so my, mine is pretty thick on this Yokohama. But uh, that's it, guys, okay? So now that the outer bead is broken, the only thing we have left to do is break the inner bead. As you can see here, we have the tire on the rear of the Jeep. I happen to be using my rear bumper, but we're gonna be using a high lift to break the bead. Now, when we break that inner bead with a high lift, it's very important that you know how to use one. Stay tuned for a future video. I'm gonna show you guys how to use a high lift safely and the many different ways that you can use it. This is just one of them. So let's get to it, let's break that inner bead. Okay, once you have your wheel set up properly, the jack set up on the sidewall of the tire, the top part of your jack on a mounting point or on a jacking point, um, we're gonna get after jacking up the Jeep to wind up using, putting pressure on the wheel so that we can break that inner bead. Now I'm gonna stand on this side of the tire so that it doesn't kind of kick up on us. And we're gonna apply some pressure to that inner bead. Okay, obviously we broke, we were able to break the bead with the, with the jack on this side of the tire, right in this area. So we rotated the tire just a little bit, moved the jack over. We're gonna continue and we're gonna break the bead all the way around the tire. All right guys, so obviously we've got the rear bead broken, the front is off, the rim is kind of pushed toward the back of the tire now, but I use balance beads, okay, to balance my tires. And the problem with balance beads when you're doing this, right, they work great. Uh, go see my balance bead video to learn how to, how to balance your wheel. Uh, that allows you to kind of mount your tire and balance it yourself at home. Um, but the problem with them is uh, they sometimes get a little static electricity going on. So in order to remove them out of the wheel, it makes more sense uh, and lose as few of them as possible. It makes sense to basically have them get to the bottom of the tire. And the way you do that is obviously with some static guard, right? This is uh, like some no-name brand, but um, you guys can take a look here. You can kind of see in there that like I have them stuck like all up and down and in the bottom. I mean, they're kind of they're kind of stuck all over the place. But like I said a second ago, hit him, hit him with some static guard, right? It kind of kills, kind of kills the static. And then you get in there with a, with a, like a dedicated little shop vac. So now that we have all the balance speeds vacuumed out of the inside of the tire, what I like to do is take a spackle bucket, okay? Just a five gallon spackle bucket. Make sure it's in good shape though, nice and strong. I lay a towel over the top so I don't scratch my wheel. And then what I'll do is I'll lay the wheel in here with the face of the wheel, the, the outside of the wheel, the part that normally gets the bead ring that everybody sees. I'll lay that on top of the bucket with the tire laying down around the side, just enough to keep the rim off the ground, the wheel off the ground, but let the tire kind of fall on its own weight. And then we lube it up again nice and liberally with, with the soap and we can kind of work our way around and get that, that inner bead now off the tire and separate the wheel from the tire. Now, what I like to do is kind of position the tire so that you can kind of see where it wants to, it already kind of wants to come off in this one spot. I'll put a little weight on that and kind of work it off and then I'll slowly work my way around the tire and it'll pop right off. All right guys, so here's the deal, all right? I was able to get the wheel out of the tire doing exactly what I just showed you. Sometimes, you might have to use the addition of a couple of pry bars over there. Now, I had to use those, okay? When I started stepping on it, working it around, uh, unfortunately my battery died, but as I started stepping on it and working my way around, I got about a third of the tire out, and all you need to get is about half of the, the tire off of the bead before the rest of it just kind of pops out. Well, what wound up happening with me is I got about a third of it out because the sidewall is so thick on this Yokohama, I couldn't get the rest of it. So what I did was I stuck a pry bar between the sidewall, the tire, and the wheel. On the edge of the wheel were the bead ring bolts. And I was able to put a pry bar on there and just push on it and soap it up real good. 
and just steady, nice, easy pressure with leverage and boom, it popped right out, okay? I've done tires before where I just pull on it and boom, it just pops right out real easy. These XMTs in a 40 have a really thick sidewall as I showed you before and they do not make it easy to get out of there. Now, stay tuned for part two because I'm gonna show you how to mount a bead lock back in the tire, okay? Throw balance beads in there to balance it and then show you step-by-step step how to secure the bead ring properly. Now with that said guys, I'm 6'4", I'm over 200 pounds, right? And this tire, this particular tire, made me work a little bit, okay? You can usually go to a tire shop and have them pull the tire off the wheel for you, okay? Getting it on is definitely easier than getting it off, okay? So if that's your issue, or you're 115 pounds and you're a female and you're just not as strong as a six foot four, 200 pound man, um, you might wanna go that route, okay? Um, again, it just depends on the tire. The Yokohama XMT is a very uh, strong tire with a high uh, load range rating. Um, it made me work for it a little bit, okay? So anyway, guys, there you have it, all right? How you take a bead lock off of a tire. Like I said, stick around for part two. Part two is coming up next week, and it will show you how to remount it. All right, guys? Get out there and build something.